Welcome to another video tutorial by Graham Daily Photography and in this video I'm going to show you how you can enhance a RAW file in Adobe Lightroom 6. This demonstration will show you my complete workflow here inside of Lightroom so that you can see exactly how I'm going to take this dull RAW file and turn it into this much nicer looking image. First thing I'm going to do is apply some lens correction. This is necessary in order to remove the distortion that is caused by the lens. You will notice how the curve on the horizon is fixed after applying the profile. I am also going to remove the chromatic aberration. Check out the link on screen to a blog post of mine that details how easily chromatic aberration can be removed in Lightroom. Now I am going to go down into camera calibration and change from Adobe Standard to Camera Landscape. I will make further tweaks to this profile later in the demonstration. Okay, let's head up to the basic panel and adjust the white balance and the color temperature as it is looking way too cold at the moment. We will need to add some warmth into the image to give it more of that classic sunset warm look and feeling. A value of 7500 should do and I think I will adjust the magenta tint slightly as well to around plus 5. Now let's go ahead and have a quick check for any sensor or filter dust marks using the clone and heal tool. I normally use the heal function rather than the clone tool. You can use the visualize spots feature in order to help identify any offending marks. I can see a few obvious ones here so I will just go ahead and remove them. Sometimes dust marks can be a little more difficult to identify and in such instances you can use the tone curve in order to help you. One great nugget of information that I learned a long time ago from a Lightroom Killer Tips blog post was that you could create an S curve in the tone curve in order to better see these stubborn dirt marks. Check out that original blog post and video tutorial at the following link. Changing the exposure will further change the tonal qualities of the image, better enabling you to identify the offending dirt marks. You will notice that I am mostly just checking the sky portion and the reason for this is because as the sky is pretty much a solid colour and free from any major textures, any dirt spots will be more evident in the sky section. Dirt marks will usually just blend into the foreground and midground. This image is actually rather clean so we are okay to proceed on with the rest of the adjustments. Let's just reset the exposure adjustment and tone curve before we move on. Okay, now I'm going to make some adjustments using the tone curve in order to add contrast to the image, as typically raw files are lower in contrast than what the scene actually was at the time of shooting. First, I'm going to boost the lights so that the histogram starts pushing more towards the right, but I need to be careful not to blow any highlights. A value of 30 looks good. Now I'm going to, to do the same and reduce the darks so that the histogram stretches back towards the left again. I do not want to reduce the darks to the point where I start losing detail in the shadow or dark areas. Just enough in order to add some contrast against the brighter points of the image. A value of minus 15 looks good for now. Alright, back up to the basic panel so that we can apply some basic adjustments to the image. First, let's look at pulling back some of the highlights. By adjusting the highlight slider we can apply a global adjustment that is a change that will affect the entire image. But in most instances you will probably only want to adjust the highlights in the sky portion and for this we can use a graduated filter. So let's go ahead and do that. Select the graduated filter tool and select the highlights preset. Align your mouse with the top of the image, hold down the left mouse click and drag the filter down so that the halfway mark of the filter lines up with roughly the horizon. Holding down the shift key while dragging down the filter will ensure that the filter stays level and straight. Once the filter is in place, let's apply some further tweaks. I'm going to adjust the exposure to a value of about minus 40, which looks okay. You can set the contrast to 20 and the clarity to 20 or, or 30. Um, in this case, 20 looks good. Increase the noise reduction to around 10 and boost the saturation slightly. A value of 12 will do in this case and click done to apply the changes. 
Back to the basic panel and now we will set our white and black points so that our image contains tonal values that are close to a true black and a true white. While holding down the Alt key, drag the blacks over to the left until you start to see black spots creeping into the white areas. The black spots represent the black points. A value of minus 38 looks okay. Now that we can see that we have some clipping on the shadow area of the histogram, let's pull back our black point so that we are not losing any detail. Minus 25 looks a bit better. Now let's do the same thing with the white slider to set our white points. We want to move the histogram towards the right hand side until we start to see white creep back into the image. When pushing the whites to the right, we always need to ensure that we do not clip and start blowing the highlights. I can see that we are starting to clip the histogram here, so I'm just going to dial back the slider a little. A value of 48 looks good. Actually, I think the sky can be further darkened a little, so let's go back to the graduated filter that we added earlier and further tweak it. I'm going to set the exposure to minus 60 or even minus 80. That looks better. And I'm going to drag the filter down a little more, just below the horizon, so that the effect transitions a little more into the image. Okay, that looks good. So let's click done to apply the changes. So I can see that our latest changes has caused the blacks to start clipping. So let's just pull back some of that detail by adjusting the black slider. A value of minus 22 looks good. I nearly always boost the vibrancy by 10 in my images, so I'm going to go ahead and do that now. This will only increase the saturation in the more subtle tones. Okay, so towards the start of the tutorial we selected the camera landscape profile in the camera calibration section and now I'm going to further tweak the individual red, green and blue channels in order to give the colours a bit more punch. As I change the red, green and blue channel sliders you will notice the histogram changing Again, we want to ensure that the histogram does not result in clipping at either end. For the red channel, a value of plus 45 is looking good. And for the green channel, a value of plus 14 looks okay. Alright, now we are going to boost the saturation levels on some of the individual colour tones. Let's boost the reds by 10, the oranges by 10, and the yellows by 5. Actually, let's reduce the oranges by 5. Okay, that looks good. I think I need to further reduce the highlights a little. Let's check what a global highlights reduction will look like. Okay, so I won't apply a global change because I want to retain the highlight levels in the water sections and the foreground. So I'm going to just leave the highlights value at zero. One further change that I want to apply is that I want to increase the color temperature of the rocks in the immediate foreground. The best way to apply this change evenly across the foreground is to use the graduated filter tool. Select the graduated filter tool, select the temp preset, and then just like earlier, simply drag the filter into position. In this instance, we will be dragging from the bottom up. Remember that holding the shift key while dragging will help you to keep the filter level. Okay, so the effect is looking a little strong right now, so let's dial the temp value back down to 10. Let's see what increasing the saturation will look like. Again, the effect is too strong and it's not what I want. Remember that the best thing about Lightroom is that the changes are non-destructive to your original image. If you make a change and you don't like it, simply undo the change by pressing Command or Control Z on your keyboard. Oops, the temp value went back to 15, so we will just need to bring that back down to 10 again, and click Done. Okay, so what I'm doing now is I'm checking the rocks in the middle section of the image in order to see if I'm happy with their current shadow, exposure and temperature levels. And I think there is definitely some room to boost the levels a little just on some of the rocks. To do this we will use the local adjustment brush and simply paint in the desired changes over the selected areas. I am going to select the dodge preset and increase the shadows by 10 and the temperature by 5. Ok, so let's go ahead and paint in the changes on this rock formation here in the foreground on the left. Ok, looks good. 
and now onto the rock formation in the midground over on the right of the frame. Yeah, that is looking pretty good. Okay, let's zoom in on the rock formation in the background on the left, the one that has a slight slimmer of side lighting from the setting sun. And let's just adjust the rock formation as well. Alright, those adjustments look good. Okay, let's go ahead and add some clarity to this image. I nearly always boost the clarity by 10, but in this instance I'm going to use a value of 20. Okay, that's looking good. Alright, let's check what a subtle vignette will look like. I will just use one of my existing presets. Hmm, I'm not sure if I am liking the current vignette effect, so I'm going to skip it for now. I think we are almost done with this image. Just going to darken the shadows a little within the graduated filter that we added to the top part of the image earlier. And I'm also going to boost the noise reduction in the graduated filter as well, just to take a little more noise out of the sky area. Okay, so the image is more or less completed now, but I think I'm going to further tweak the immediate foreground rocks a little more. I will go ahead and select the graduated filter that we applied to this portion of the image earlier, and I'm going to increase the clarity and contrast a little. Alright, now to apply the finishing touch to the image, which is the sharpening. So we will go down to the details panel, and I'm going to first just apply one of my existing sharpening presets, but I will end up adjusting this further. I will increase the sharpness to a value of 80, but I'm going to use the masking slider to restrict the sharpening to only specific areas. If you hold down the Alt key while adjusting the masking slider, Lightroom will bring up a screen overlay similar to when we were changing the white and dark points earlier, and this screen overlay will allow us to clearly see the portions of the image which are being sharpened. Basically, everything that is white is what will be affected by the sharpening, and everything black will not be sharpened. We want to avoid sharpening the sky as much as possible. A value of 45 looks good. I think I will put in a small vignette after all. And to do this, I will go to the effects panel and simply adjust the amount value to around minus five. Okay, that is looking pretty good now. And just one final local adjustment brush to this particular rock formation. And there we have it, the final image. Well, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and that you found it helpful. Subscribe to my YouTube channel in order to stay updated with additional videos and also like my Facebook page to keep connected with me.